Oh dear, that's not good. So we've got a little issue that don't look good at all. Basically, this has been rubbing against that. So this is what happens when the motor wires aren't fixed to the frame properly. This side looks okay. Still a little bit close, but at least it's actually clamped on. Fortunately, it looks like only one of these wires has kind of lost its sheath. <laughs> so a little bit of DIY with some electrical tape and some cable ties, and it'll be good to go. Unfortunately, this is a really common thing to happen with hub drive e-bikes because you've got phase wires that actually come out of the hub. There's no other way of doing it. They kind of have to come out and then be rooted on the frame of the bike. Now on this scooter, there's actually only three wires, but on some, most of the other e-bikes, especially the kits that we sell, they've actually got six other little cables in there as well, which are for hall sensors. So if we had the situation that we just had there with the scooter with a bike, chances are probably you would have broken all your hall sensor wires and that is a really common thing to happen so you've got to watch out always kind of like get your wires for your hub motor and kind of route them to the frame so that nothing can actually kind of chafe and the other thing you've got to watch out for is on your brake disc the little screws that hold the brake discs onto the hub make sure they're lock tighted up or just really tight because if they come out they can actually chafe that wire as well and cause a break and then you basically be stranded. Also, if those phase wires touch, you're probably gonna end up with your controller going up in smoke. So it's going down over there. There was a massive meat wagon when I was coming back. Starbucks, I didn't know it was a Starbucks thing. These heated gloves are probably one of the best things I've bought, I think. They're so much better than the cheap crap ones I've actually tried on Amazon. Um, these are expensive ones, but they really work well. It is flipping cold out there, just in time. Kel Digit TS3 Plus. This is meant to be the ultimate hub. How many ports there are? So I love the fact you can just literally just jump on something electric these days and just avoid all the traffic, you know, zip up, zip across the um, cycle lanes and get to where you want to get, actually wheel the thing. I oh, took that little scooter into the bank and, you know, done the stuff that I needed to do and then hop back on. You know, I was careful to walk it through pedestrian zones and stuff like that. You've got to be mindful with this stuff. You know, there's a little bit of controversy around it. Anyway, not going to get into that in this video, but love the fact you can do all this stuff. But as you've seen in the beginning of this video, my little scooter, it needed a bit of maintenance. So, you know, this is the thing to be aware of, like these electric, um, little electric vehicles, they are gonna need some sort of maintenance at some point. So it's, it's quite good to sort of know what can go wrong and the common things that you could kind of come across. Because, you know, really, if you're going to a, a, a shop, um, most of the shops that you kind of, you know, will go to, like maybe like a cycle shop, they probably won't know what they're doing when it comes to electric bikes at this stage, unless they're really kind of, you know, up on it, um, you're going to find that they're probably just going to go, oh, I think it's, we're going to have to contact the manufacturer or, or something like that. It's very difficult. It's a bit of a black art. Um, and that's kind of, you know, what I'm trying to, you know, kind of, you know, help people with. So you've seen my good mate Steve um, do stuff, a feature in my channel quite a bit lately. Um, and most recently it's for these pit bites that we've been doing. And um, we've, you know, built Steve a really cool little um, electric pit bite, which he's loving. Um, and <laughs> we've been having a lot of fun on these bikes basically um, but there is a thing we've kind of made a battery we've DIY'd a battery we've used lipo cells in there to get maximum power out of them and um, we've actually put in a BMS in the battery like a battery management system that allows you to see what's going on in the battery a lot of e-bike systems e-bike OEM bikes bikes that you buy won't have won't give you the ability to actually see what's going on inside your battery. 
so you know whilst you can see like mechanical issues and things wires you know that are catching like we've seen on my scooter you can't necessarily see what's actually going on in the battery or understand it unless you understand electric electric principles um so we've put this bms inside um steve's battery so that we can you know keep an eye on things and i've, I've and all my builds i'm using this bms now and it's a bms that we actually sell in the store um so this is kind of the screenshot of it and it gives you a rundown of like battery voltage um it gives you your current readings and stuff like that so lots of stuff that you might not necessarily care about but it's useful for diagnosing problems and we did come across a problem here where one of the cells in the battery so you can see there's 18 cells in total and um, one of the cells had actually gone down to three volts now the reason for this is could be many things many many things but um, it actually turned out that we think that because the balancing system is set to actually equalize all the cells um, at a high voltage and Steve's been quite paranoid about um, charging lipos you know quite rightly so got to really not leave these things unattended when you're charging them he wasn't actually fully charging the the um, pack until he wanted to ride it so I think we had a situation where it wasn't actually equalizing out so you can kind of see um, on the actual you know stats here three volts a cell and this meant that you couldn't actually charge because we see here we've got this cell under voltage um, thing here saying there so it's basically shut down the system and to protect everything and this is you know highly configurable um, BMS and yeah that's that's what it's done so effectively in this situation the BMS has done its job it's protected the battery from you know having any um, what's well, protecting you from using the battery and it's just shut the entire system down so someone with some know-how aka me um, can then kind of diagnose what's actually going on so between us you know we kind of went through and um, backwards and forwards and we're working out you know what what the problem is and um, trying to rectify it in the end we managed to get the the battery back up to uh, that particular cell up to the same level as all the others and um, we did a quick test as well because what you can do with this system is you can actually um, record on you know because it's running on Android you can actually do a screen record and then take this out I've done this on a few of my videos actually um, you can screen record this BMS screen and as you're kind of accelerating and giving it you know giving it the beans through the twisties and all of that you can actually see what each cell in the battery is actually doing so you can see if one cell is a bit weak um, and this happened to me as well with one of my battery builds recently um, and go back a few videos and you'll see it uh, where one cell was really not holding up very well at all and um, I ended up having to strip the battery and take that particular cell out now you know if you buy a bike from a shop you're not going to expect to be doing this sort of thing but it's useful to have that knowledge to know that where the problem could be it's a bit like it's a bit like a car isn't it like you know if you if you kind of know a bit about engines you'll say well you know it's probably the start motor like, the battery isn't charging and you know there's probably an issue there do we change the battery or do we look at do we test to see if you know there's actually voltage coming into the battery to make sure it's you know actually charging um so yeah it's, it's useful information to know but good news we got it sorted and um it's all back and running uh, i mean the alternative would have been that that battery was a problem and it would have had to have gone back to um, the manufacturer who actually Steve purchased that from which was like a hobby hobby king um, which uh, supply the, the lipo batteries so you can see the beauty of building a DIY e-bike if you've built it you can most probably fix it so that's why I always kind of encourage people um, you know to do that you know if you have a basic knowledge obviously if you don't have any knowledge at all about electrics then it's probably best to you know go and try and find an off-the-shelf bike and learn about that um, you know that way and then maybe one day you might be able to put some bits together and actually kind of piece a bike and, and create the bike of your dreams so anyway I'm going to stop waffling now I think I'm going to do more videos like this because it's, it's a big topic to cover lots of different aspects of kind of troubleshooting bikes um, and every time I come across a problem I'll try and make a video about it that's probably the best thing I can do and then you'll see what how I'm solving those problems because I am solving quite a few problems like it might be just because I've got so many bikes now and it's just seems to be a constant 
mission to keep them all running. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, like, do the usual stuff. Let me know of your problems in the in the comments as well. If you've got a problem with an e-bike, just let me know. And then I can probably, you know, put all these things together and hopefully make a solution. But you're probably going to want it quicker than I can probably tell you. So I'll try and answer things in the comments anyway. But yeah, until then. Ah, yeah, because also this system is where I'm sitting right now is actually going to be um, is, is for my live streaming setup. So I'm waiting for some super insane broadband to be installed in this place. Um, and then I'll be able to do some live streams. So then you will even be able to fire me some questions and I'll be able to answer them that way. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Catch you in the next one.